organizations desire growth in order to prosper, not just to survive. However, this means different things for different organizations. In this episode of Seed Chat, we'll be talking about organizational growth. I am Adekemi Adefisayo, and you are welcome to the Seed Chat. Hey, welcome back to the show. And of course, like I said earlier, we're having a phenomenal guest join us today on Seed Chat. I've been having a really exciting conversation with him away from the camera, but you'll be meeting him in just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, let's make welcome Dr. Smith Bam. Yay! What's up? How you doing? Better than you. That's unfair. Why? <laughs> what have I done to deserve this? <laughs> Life is unfair. It's great to have you on the show oh, today, well, sir. Good. Great. And like I said, we really want to draw so much, as much as we can get out of you. And um, the topic for the show today is organizational growth. Mm -hmm. um, and we're really trying to just understand how organizations can do better the things they should be looking out for, what are the metrics, what are the ways that they know, yes, we're doing good, yes, we're growing. Um, how can they make comparisons to Fortune 1 companies, you mm -hmm. know, and just say, are we meeting up? Are we, can we compete globally? And can we really stand the test of time? And also, how can we scale hurdles uh, when we come to phases where it seems like we're not growing anymore? Um, the first question I'd like to ask today would be, what are the metrics? How can an organization really measure growth? Is it just by profits? Because that's what everyone really knows, right? Oh, we're making money, so we're growing. But is that the only way to know if a company is growing or there are other metrics to follow? Well, like I said, um, I think it's a dicey, it's a dicey game. And um, I, I, I've met quite a number of people who run businesses and we may have dif dif different opinion about how we're measuring growth but there's one that we all share. It's profit. Mm. The numbers don't lie. The figures don't lie. Are we making money? You know, the investors want to be certain that okay, per, per capital, they're making money. And the, 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 people say we'll create businesses to bring in ideas and get customers equal to profit eventually. Mm. And so we want to ask ourselves, compared to last quarter, compared to last year, did we make more money? Did we make profit? Now, if we make profit, we're growing. True. If we're not making profit, we're groaning. Uh. Yeah, so we have to grow so that we don't groan. You know, so, uh, uh, and it doesn't matter how much people like your business. It doesn't matter how much people say you're really out there. The bottom line is, are we... Is there money coming in? Profit. Now, that's one indices. But then again, you also want to see, are we expanding? Mm. But that is, is dicey because it's not everybody that wants to expand. Some people are fine to be in Ikeja, and that's it. They have one branch, and they're not thinking of um, moving up to Ujueleba, or, or South to Africa, Abuja. or they, they out of want, the country. They're not interested in all that. Because expansion comes with its own challenges. Mm. And a lot of times when companies expand in terms of branches, it's not necessarily that they're growing. But then, if that is one of the ways you want to measure if we're growing, okay, so we started here, um, where are we now, you know? Well, that could be another way to measure if you're growing. So you have the second indices. The first is profit. The second is expansion. How well are we expanding? Now, there are also people who believe in customer base. Mm. You know, so you want to say, how many customers do we have? This year we have a thousand. Okay, we'll the next time, are we, are we, are we increasing mm. in our customer base? And that's really major. Because if you, if you grow your customer base, Common sense will think that your profit should also expand. But, but is it always? Do. No. The type of customers also matter. Quality of yeah, the you customers you're you trapped. You, you can have a hundred, a hundred interesting customers. I don't want to use the <laughs> wrong word. You know, so you want to be certain about that. Mm. And then I would say maybe the fraud in this has to do with the number of workforce that you have. So say we start a business today and then we have 10 people. And three years from now, we are 100. Five years from now, we are 160. You know, okay, so we want to say, okay, because of the number of workforce that we have, uh, we're growing. Interesting. So, I mean, I think I really love that point where he said, if you're not growing, then you're groaning. Oh, oh, and that's a challenge. And I think one of the biggest business lessons I've come to learn personally is also the fact that you could actually be making revenue, but that doesn't even mean that you're making profit. Exactly. But that's a conversation for another day. The next thing we'd like to move into now would be 
So what are the stages of organizational growth? Um, you've talked about the indices already, there's profit. Um, you've also talked about the customer base, so, uh, staff strength, location, expansion. But what are the stages of, you know, organizational growth? Is it um, early, are there early stages, late stages? Are there stages where the organization just starts to die out? What are those stages? What do they look like? Well, um, there's no uh, mystery behind stages. It's just life growth. Mm. An organization is an organism. Mm. It's the same thing. The biology can actually explain business. What? The way the organism grows is the way an organization grows. And so when you want to look at the game of stages, you know, you give birth to mm. the organization. It starts. And then you have, it's growing. So some people can call it all manner of name. They can call it all, um, first of all, it's conceptual. And then it goes into uh, awareness. And then it goes to the stage of adoption. And they can give it all the names anybody wants to give it. But every organization has a three-stage growth. Well, when well, well, you're giving birth to, as you're going through maturity, mm. then you become matured. That's simple. Now, um, if it dies... I was going to get there. If, and if a company dies... I don't know if you're going to understand this. Help us understand. Organizations don't die. So that would be the difference now between an organization and an organism. If we put it that way. People kill the organization. Mm. It doesn't just die. Mm. Because there's no organization without an organism. Mm. There are no institutions without individuals. And so, so when you say that a company is declining, what you're actually saying is that the people in the company are declining. Mm. The building doesn't decline. Mm. It's the people. You know, so a lot of times, pick a company like Coca-Cola, for example. It's over 100 years. It's and they're still innovating like the, on exactly, a daily, exactly. doing way better. And most companies die in five years. So what's the problem? It's not the stage. That is, you can't, you can't say, oh, now that we give birth to it, now I guess to this point, and then the next point is it has to decline. You just brought me to a very important point that just as you started, you know, uh, talking, which is many African companies are known to not cross the five year mark, mm -hmm. you know, in comparison to some of the big brands that we know. And one of the questions I was actually going to ask, so probably we could put it together, would be what causes an organization to stop growing up until the point that they die and then they phase out of being in existence? So what causes an organization to stop growing? Point of right correction. It's not, it's not African. General. Across the world. Interesting. The average organization does not last beyond five years, then it dies. Why? It's all over the world. So, so don't make it an African, an African thing. There's so many reasons for this. But then I'm just going to talk about three, which is very major. First of all, I think a lot of companies should not even outlive five years. They shouldn't go past five years. Why? They were not built to last. Mm -hmm. That's a conversation. From the very foundation, there was no reason why they should be around beyond five years. I run a small organization that is 21 years old. How? So what ingredients? See, make? from the very first, from, from the beginning, there were, there were no clear-cut vision. They were not operating on core ideologies. Now, see, everything in the market could change, but the reason for existence, why are we here? Why did you start this company? Mm. A lot of people do start companies to make money. That is the wrong reason. You start a company to add value. And you must be certain about what kind of value you want to add and the market segment that you want to add the value to. Mm. And so a lot of people that start businesses have no business running a business. So when they don't, when it doesn't grow beyond, the, now think about it. We all know that's what's going to happen. Does it, do, doesn't it make sense that you start asking yourself, if you're going to start a business, to say, what, what do the companies that extend to 20 years? To rent, what do they what do, do they differently? Do? No, but people, you know, people don't ask the question. And success can be repeated if you know how it was produced. Mm. So people don't even know how those companies were created, so they cannot create the same thing. So first of all, people start companies, start businesses just because of money. For the wrong no reason. Ethos. They don't have company values. There's none. Second reason, people, look, I don't know how you're going to enjoy this, but there's one thing that stops growth, complacency. The moment 
the average company smells a little bit of success. They relax. Have you ever seen a very fantastic bread? Everybody's buying it. Classic story. And over time, and is it, is it, is it bread I bought last month? What's going on? And the quality starts. It's as simple as that. So you don't have to go too far to a business school to see why. It's mm. that simple. The moment you drop quality, you will be out of business. Unfortunately, you are, we live in a world of alternatives. People have alternatives. So, A, I don't think some of these comments are meant to go beyond five years. They are complacent. And then, I think the third reason, most companies don't change. You're in an environment that is fluid. Things are changing. It's a vulgar environment, and you're not changing. Nokia didn't change. Nokia died. So true. Kodak didn't change. Kodak died. See, the, the, and we have companies right now that are doing very well, but there's no guarantee that they're going to be around if they don't adapt. The capacity to be agile, to adapt to the changing environment, is key if you don't want your company to die. Is that a masterclass or what? <laughs> really? Come on. That is like so much just put in there. Starting a business, an organization for the right reasons. Yeah. It's more of value. And value, someone once said that, you know, um, money, wealth is the byproduct of value. So put value out there and definitely yeah. you're going to get that profit that you're really mm -hmm. chasing. So probably we need to start running the race differently. Exactly. Um, as we bring this particular segment, uh, this segment to a close, I would like to ask, so from your experience, what are some of the common challenges that organizations face when they want to move from one level to another in terms of growing now? And how can they overcome, you know, such challenges? I think you've mentioned one when you say, okay, innovation. So inability to innovate, of course, could be, one of the things that would hold you back. But then, how can we overcome some of the challenges that organizations face when growing? So because we don't have the time, I'm going to just share from very practical experience uh, two things. You, you see, when companies try to move to the next level, mm. to expand, to, to, to grow beyond where they are, the leaders of that company need to expand and grow individually in order mm. to drag the company to that level. Mm. Most people attempt what will kill them. Mm. Because when you want to grow an organization, the question is, are the leaders better than they were when they were small? Mm. Very important question. Capacity. Because just imagine somebody drops 10 billion in your account right now. You first of all going to run to the toilet and you, 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 you're going to lose. Why? Because that wealth that was dropped in your hand, you probably have well, never handled yeah. such before and there's a tendency for you to misbehave. And mismanage. Exactly. So you see, most times when you say, look, we want, we want to grow the company, don't grow the company. Grow the leaders. Mm. If you grow the leaders, they will grow the company. It'll trickle down. It's as simple as that. And so, for me, the, the leaders don't grow, and so it affects the growth of that organization. The second thing I've also seen is growth. When people try to move their companies forward, what hinders them is this. This will shock you. Denial. Denial about what now? Two things. Okay. Denial about the realities of the new growth. Oh. Thinking you can continue doing the same thing the same way and move to the next level. No. Mm. You're denying it. The second thing they're denying, they're denying the fact that the customers are asking for something better. They assume that we can continue giving people the same thing we're giving them and not improve on it. And they'll be comfortable. And people, look, these things are very simple. So for me, when, 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 when think we do things that truncate our growth, it's not necessary. I don't believe the market destroys any company. Companies are destroyed, first of all, internally. Mm. The market only exposes their destruction. Is this a masterclass or what? I think that's going to be my hashtag, you know, for this particular episode because I'm mind blown. Um, you do not grow an organization. You grow the leaders. Yeah. And then the leaders grow will the grow the company. And don't live in denial. You know, if you want your company to shine and be around for years and years to come and keep growing, then you also need to adapt to the current market trends and also be able to innovate. And it's a lot to unpack, but that's the beauty of it. You can go back, watch over 
over and over again with your pen and paper and just get the most of it. So I hope we'll have you back when next we ask for you to come back on the show. Because if you say no right now, I'm just going to be like... If you're going to do the interview, I'll be back. Yay! <laughs> so that's what it is. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Seed Chats. It's been phenomenal. You can testify. Do well to subscribe to our social media platforms on Instagram, YouTube. If you've not subscribed to the channel, do subscribe. And of course, see you next time. I am Adekemi Adekisaya. See the Academy, your growth partner.